Thus far, we've talked about listening to understand the other person's perspective. We've talked about uh, asking open-ended questions as a tool to understand uh, how the other person's seeing the world, what their reaction to that is, what they want from us. The next thing we're going to talk about is nonverbals. By nonverbals, I mean body language, emotional expression, or uh, facial expressions, uh, emotions in one's voice, the tone and tenor of one's voice, basically anything that is not communicated uh, verbally. People love the idea of reading body language, which I think is kind of funny, but uh, we'll talk about it in a second. Uh, so one of the reasons nonverbal behavior is so important is that it gives insight into immediacy. Um, we are often very careful about choosing our words uh, when we talk to other people. Uh, we, we censor and, and curate our verbal communication very well. Uh, we're often just kind of unaware of what we're doing physically. And so because of that, because it's a less censored version of ourselves, uh, it's often more authentic and uh, it often communicates more than perhaps the speaker is meaning to, um, especially emotions, right? Uh, emotions are very much uh, in our body. We talk about, we call emotions feelings because we feel them in our body. And we also express our emotions through our body. So through uh, our facial expressions, our posture, uh, gripping our hands, whatever it is, we're communicating our emotion um, through our body. And so by paying attention to people's nonverbal behavior, uh, it often provides a lot of context, especially emotional context, uh, for what the person is saying. All right, but first some caveats. Uh, man, there's all these shows like Lie to Me or like whatever about people with these amazing body language abilities, body language reading abilities, and they can essentially just like read people's minds. Uh, or even now on like CNN, I see they bring in quote body language experts unquote uh, when politicians give a speech or when there's a debate and they try to assess what the person's thinking and feeling uh, purely through their body language, right? Um, I've heard, for example, that 93% of communication is nonverbal. Uh, that is not true. Uh, if 93% of communication were nonverbal, then like being deaf wouldn't be that big a deal. You're only missing 7% of the information, right? Uh, no, a lot of information is communicated verbally. It is important to listen to the verbal content of what people are saying, uh, but body language provides this context for it. It gives us insight into people's emotions. So it is still very important. That being said, uh, nonverbal behavior is highly ambiguous. So, uh, for example, I am a restless person, and if I am ever sitting in a chair, I am bouncing my leg up and down. Um, now, a body language expert would look at that and say, oh, Tommy's nervous about something. Uh, maybe in like a deep existential way, I'm, I'm nervous about the fact that I'll die and life is meaningless. Maybe. Uh, but it's more likely that I'm just kind of a restless person. Uh, I do that when I'm sitting at home watching TV perfectly relaxed. I shake my leg, right? Um, so th there's not like this one-on-one -on -one interpretation of people's body language. It's ambiguous. Likewise, uh, we see this guy with his crossed arm posture here, and uh, if we had a body language expert, they would tell us that he's closed off, right? He's closed off to our ideas. Uh, it could also just be that he's cold. People cross their arms when they're cold. Um, th there could be a lot of reasons for it. So be really careful of jumping to conclusions just based on people's body language. Nonverbal behavior is also powerfully influenced by culture. So I lived in China for a year. They have very different uh, cultural expectations when it comes to things like eye contact, uh, also just facial expressions in general. Um, I uh, had a friend there who uh, worked in a jewelry store and she got fired because she literally like did not smile uh, that uh, they told her like, hey, if you're in the store, when you're talking to customers, you got to smile, you got to look happy. And uh, she grew up in a traditional part of China where people didn't smile a lot and it was very uncomfortable for her. Um, eye contact is, as well is very different there. Um, 
it, it's they make eye contact much less than we do in the United States. Making eye contact uh, is is seen as aggressive or hostile. Uh, so it's polite to look away when people are talking to you or when you're talking to other people. Uh, intellectually, I knew this, right? Like I, I studied um, cultural differences between China and America. I knew intellectually that there was this cultural difference in eye contact. And yet at a gut level, at an emotional level, it still made me very, uh, very uncomfortable, right? Like, why is this person not paying attention to me? Why is this person bored by what I'm saying, right? Why won't they make eye contact with me? Uh, so nonverbal behavior is, is ambiguous. It's also strongly influenced by culture. So you want to attend to nonverbal behavior holistically. And what I mean by that is don't pick apart, you know, there's this like saying that like, oh, if people look to the right, they're, if they look up into the right, they're lying. And if they look up into the left, they're remembering. Um, as far as I know, none of that is true. There is not this kind of one-on-one -on -one mapping between people's um, body language, their nonverbal behavior and what it means. Um, don't don't look at people's body language piecemeal look at it as a whole look at how they carry themselves look at how all of the gestures kind of fit in uh, to how they're carrying themselves and use that to make interpretations about what they might be thinking or feeling don't get caught up in details one thing that you can look for in body language is something called mirroring uh, mirroring is when two people in a conversation, they, they adopt the same posture, they adopt the same stance. Uh, if you've never heard of this before and you're just hearing it now, pay attention uh, to the conversations you're having this week and you'll notice that uh, you'll look down and you'll see that you have adopted the posture of the person you're talking to or you'll change your posture and you'll notice that the person you're talking to adopts your posture. Uh, it's actually very common uh, once you notice it. Uh, this is called mirroring. Uh, people mirror when they are, it, it's like a natural thing. People do, people do it um, unconsciously. They're unaware that they're doing it. Uh, they do it when they feel safe. They do it when they feel connected to the other person. They do it when they're interested in what the other person is saying. Uh, so if you notice that someone is mirroring you, then uh, that's a pretty good indication that they are interested, they're engaged in the conversation.